Hey everybody, what up? It is Scuff D here, and today we are taking a look at the Death Guard card pool. That's what we're going to take a look at, so let's get to it. <clears throat> okay, so the Death Guard, the Death Guard, formerly known as the Dusk Raiders, is the, uh, the, the, the slog and trudge frontline troops of uh, of the Emperor's Space Marines. They are just get into the thick of it. They're very uh, notorious for their chemical warfare, chem munition, biological, uh, just the just the, 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 the tried and true method um, issued up by their warlord Martarian. Uh, just always going forward. They've kind of got that that vibe. They are what what is exclusive to the uh, Death Guard currently is the poison mechanic, which is as we'll we'll discuss is uh, not the best. Um, I will go ahead and preface this. Uh, my experience with the Death Guard is more limited in terms of games against them. Um, I'm missing a few actually between the Death Guard and the Iron Hands. Those are the two legions that I don't have enough of the legendary cards to really function well. And um, the Death Guard is one, I think, where you want to have access to those legendary cards to really to really make the pieces work. Um, however, for quite some time in various phases of the game, the Death Guard have had a presence, uh, whether it's through event play or whether it's actually on the ladder mode. It just kind of depends. Um, just about a month ago, we had Garrow Gate 2018, and we'll kind of go into that just a little bit. We don't have to worry about that anymore, but there was a resurgence uh, in that for a, for a very obvious reason, and we're kind of glad that that's not around anymore. So, again, going alphabetical here with the Warlords, not necessarily from rarity to uh, to rarity to rarity, but uh, Kellis Typhon. So Typhon actually has a low initiative, and uh, most of the Death Guard, actually, nobody, I don't think, it actually has a high initiative here. Um, his ability basically just lets him heal three to himself. It's very basic. It's very rudimentary, but it is very solid when you think about it. Um, opening turns of the game, if you don't have any troops, your opponent decides to attack you with, with their Warlord. They're dealing two. And essentially, you're going to recover that back. You're not going to lose anything, and they're losing two just by attacking you. Um, it only takes a few applications of this ability to really swing the game. You know, if he uses it three or four times, that's an additional 12 health in the course of a game. So um, it's, a, it's, it's a good ability. It's not bad. Uh, Callus Typhon, I think, really is his... His main thing that suffers right now is that low initiative, losing that that momentum um, in the first part of the game. Not terrible, but again, um, it's it's enough of a detriment where you don't you don't see him as played as often as he used to be. I think the initiative implication really really dropped him down a bit. Um, in addition to that, I think Durak Rask, who has a medium initiative, so he has a higher initiative here. He's just got a better ability all around. Um, so he's a siege master, and he destroys structures and vehicles damaged when he attacks them. Just straight out right destroys them. It doesn't matter how much health they have left. Um, it does not work if the uh, structure or vehicle is shielded or drop potted. So to that degree, he does actually have to do damage to it. Um, and then in addition to that, his ability is really the kicker, and this is what's great, is for two energy he's dealing four damage to a damaged enemy troop. That's significant damage. That's not going to do anything to your opponent's warlord. However, if you've built your deck right or you time your strikes right, you only need to do one damage, pay two energy, and you destroy a five a five health troop. Just like that. Um, if you've got if your opponent has got, you know, a Malgahurst uh, on the table um, nice fat 8 health, you only need to actually do 4 damage to it and trigger his ability, and Malgahurst is gone. More importantly, that's not a tactic that Malgahurst can copy, so it's a very useful thing. It's in, it's basically, he has access to that the entire game. That's huge when you really think about it. Um, mass, 
uh, random damage attacks, uh, defensive satellites, artillery strikes, endurance, which is a death card exclusive card, damage everything across the board, um, and then trigger that with his ability to, to get rid of anything that you that you really truly need to get rid of. It's a great utility to have. He's a very, he's not necessarily, unless there's a structure that you just really want to get rid of, Hall of Rights is a prime example. Hall of Rights, um, Shield Generator, uh, you know, Command Bunker, maybe, and then certain vehicles that you might be willing to take some additional hit just to get rid of them because you know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, the Emperor's Children have got that three, three drop uh, sneak attack bike. It's only three, and then he just destroys it, and you don't have to worry about following it up with an additional attack. So, just a very solid, solid uh, Warlord. And you can use him a lot of ways. Um, I think he's very strong. I don't think he's top tier currently at, at the moment, just because of the meta shift. Doesn't allow for too many troops on the table, so it's not as necessary. It's still very effective. And the Death Guard have a great range of, of healing and building up aboard themselves. Um... But I would I would I would put him good as a solid a solid uh, second tier, not even second tier, low top tier option. Now Mortarian is the is the Primarch. He's the legendary card. I do not own Mortarian, unfortunately, uh, just for the simple fact that I like to own Primarchs, and it'd be nice to have Mortarian. Um, I I like his character. I like the concept of uh, you know. His 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 backstory is very interesting, and and, and how how his uh, how the way he perceives the world is very interesting. Um, but he has a low initiative as a as a warlord, which is not great, as we've discussed. In addition to that, um, he's a primarch, so he, it's not often that you're going to have a primarch with low initiative. I think I think there might be. I think Varus Manus might have low initiative too. I'd have to take a quick look just to refresh my memory. Um, but his ability is nice for two energy. He stuns a unit. And that can include your opponent's warlord. That can also include that big baddie that is, you know, going to hit you in the face. It's not a bad cost. It's accessible all game. That's very nice. But let's talk about some of the downsides of him besides his low initiative. His Whispers of Chaos. Let's go down to that. Let's take a look at that. His Whispers of Chaos is... I would, I would say, hands down, the worst whispers of chaos. I would, you know, initially maybe it would have been a, um, a semi-close battle between this one and Ferris Manus' uh, uh, reckoning initially. However, Ferris Manus' reckoning has been recently fixed and is much more viable, much more effective. Um, so it's a 16 cost. Okay. And it's minus one when a troop dies to poison. Okay. You have to kill six troops, any troop, including your own, which which can happen with poison, to drop it to a ten cost. But that's hard, easier said than done. <laughs> poison itself. Let's talk about the poison ability here. So a poison troop dies at the end of its turn. At the end of its turn, still gets to act. So it could still sacrifice itself and not die by poison. Um, it can still use an ability. It can still, you know, be bounced and return to its hand and come back out in full health. It doesn't do anything to reduce the stats of that. It doesn't cause any damage. It simply puts a status on them that by the end of the next turn they're going to be gone. And you have to use that six times with Mortarian. Now, the, the, the benefit, and you have to build your deck this way, and there's only... You know, I mean, there's only so many poison cards. They're decent, but you have to build your deck to include all those poison cards. And then when you poison a troop that you don't want to kill, that, that you don't want to have your opponent throw itself on your on your sword and kill itself, you use Mortarian's ability to stun it. It can't do anything, and then at the end of the turn it dies. And then this goes down by one point. Now that costs you whatever the cost of the poison card is, which is usually a two cost. And then it costs you two energy for Mortarian's ability, which is four energy to reduce his whisper by one. And that's it. 
and in the course of four energy is as useful as that is especially if you're ahead of the game in terms of how many troops you have on the board that'll pay off um, but it doesn't it it just it's not it's not good enough uh, poison cloud which poisons all troops in play mean that you need to have multiple troops in play to really benefit from it I believe that cost of four we'll take a look at that here in a sec so that's a that's a four but it doesn't do anything to stun them all and you can only stun one troop a turn so even then your opponent still has the opportunity to utilize all of them to their full extent on his next turn and potentially kill them all and deny you of that of that poison tick um, I think it was a Q&A this week recently where the devs mentioned that they were taking a look at the poison mechanic. I really hope that they fix it. Um, it has the potential to be interesting. It is the only thing that did the Death Guard have that's exclusive to them. Um, but it's terrible. It's just not... It's nothing to build a deck around. It works okay in events. In, a, in a certain events, I think the one that we're going on right now here... Uh, the Blood of the Primarch event, uh, there's a Martarian deck that is not too shabby against Ferris Manus. Um, however, again, you know, going into it, that's just that deck, and that's just that matchup. Stunning Ferris Manus is kind of important, especially late game. really shuts down his, his, his potential. But, th going back to Martarian, he starts with that as one of his cards in his hand. It's it's a dead card the entire game. Now, most Whispers, you could argue, are kind of dead cards for most of the Warlords uh, until, like, the late stages or if certain things have been done. But I would say with Martarian's case, his case is the one case at this time of the game where it is literally a dead card. I mean, I've seen his Whisper take off twice, ever, in the history of playing this game, playing against Mortarian, and part of that is because not at all people don't play Mortarian. Part of the reason that people don't play Mortarian is because he's not great to begin with because of that Whispers card. Um, and I think one of those transformations was even in the event. So it doesn't even count, really. I mean, it's fun to see, but it's, it doesn't count. Now, what does his transformation do? Um, I believe, and this is just me, I believe it's two to heal four to himself. I believe. And that's it. Doesn't stun anything, doesn't do any damage. It's just an improved Typhon, which isn't bad late game because he gets the eight from pulling it off, uh, pulling off his Whisper, and then he can heal four, so he's going up 12, and then he just can keep going. I mean, the Death, the death Guard arguably have the most healing potential um, it's a close call right now between them and the Iron Hands in the game, but they have, I would say, the most potential, in my opinion, to heal, 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 heal. Um, so that's not bad. That's good, but it's such a long road to get there, and you're never really going to see it, so you have to play Mortarian completely different, and then you're playing with the dead card in your hand in addition to going second. Um, he can win. Those games go very long. They go long because of his ability. They go long because of what has to be done to play him properly. He's not offensive. You're usually using him as a, his ability, not often using him to attack. So, Mortarian games go long, which is another blow against why people play him. Because, you know, you're playing on your phone, you're playing on your tablet, whatever the, wherever you're using to play on. Maybe you don't have 15 minutes to sit down and play one game. That's kind of a draw. Now, if Poison worked a little bit faster, uh, maybe we'd see something different. So we'll see what time brings for Martarian. But at this point in time, I, 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 I rank him currently as the worst Primarch uh, that's out there and available. Now, Nathaniel Garrow has gone through so many changes. This is his current iteration. Uh, it took them forever to really find his stride. So he starts with an extra card. He's your entry Death Guard uh, warlord you can get him with the starter and after putting a troop in play he can act again that's newer and that's very useful actually when you think about it uh, and then for two energy he can heal too and his initiative is medium so again medium is the highest that the death guard are going to get at this point in time yeah like i said garo's gone through multiple changes this current change is a better improvement to what his past uh 
his past application was. It's not any different, to be honest with you. They they didn't change him. They changed uh, Vengeance, and that made it a lot more functional. But if you build your deck right with Garrow, and you have a lot of not necessarily high-cost cards, but good low to medium-cost cards, a medium, I would say, three or four cabinet at four-cost cards, you know, you can use him to attack, drop a character, heal from that attack, maybe drop another character now, depending on how late in the game it is, and attack again, or do three attacks. The uh, the abuse that we were seeing with the, with the Garrow Gate of 2018 um, was really just slapping Vengeance, which upped his attack to five, and then dropping a bunch of one-drop or zero-drop troops uh, out of your hand and just attacking like seven times to kill a Warlord. It was not a lot of thought process behind it. It was just take some damage early in the game and then come back with that card and win the game. So now he's been changed where you do kind of have to time how you play these units. But he can benefit late game. Again, he can potentially, if you really time it right, heal himself several times in a turn. Or he can attack several times in a turn, which can be very useful to get rid of that 4-drop if he doesn't have any damage cards in hand. He's very versatile in a different way than Durak Rask, a very versatile Death Guard Warlord, um, but he operates best with with a deck that is very low to medium cost at, at most. And there are some medium cost cards you just want to include, um, but where he operates best is right at that range because you can maximize his ability. You don't have to blow it out of the gate right away, but late game, that turnaround, you could just heal yourself and drop troops and heal yourself and not do anything and now you've got four or five troops on the board and your opponent has to deal with those in addition to your health have gone up you know two to six so a good a good choice you have to look at what you're putting in your deck with Garrow. don't just throw in death guard stuff look at how it works with his ability uh but he's he's a, he's a, he's currently in a good place i think i think he's a very good warlord option so maldoon squad is a 1-4 for 1 energy. It's very basic, front line, that's it. That's all it does. But you see them all the time in Death Guard because they can be spawned by one of the Death Guard cards that we'll take a look at. Um, actually, two of the Death Guard cards spawn Melda now. Um, it's a front line. It's a, it's a quick front line. It's easily dealt with for the most part. It only does one. However, there's a variety of ways to pump up your troops with Death Guard. And when I say variety, I mean like two cards but they're good cards um so i wouldn't include a meldon squad necessarily by itself in my deck maybe in a garrow maybe um because there's other cards you just give them it's, it's an auto and it's a generated card so you don't need to include it in your deck if another card's going to give you that card but that is a that's a card now black grenade is the direct damage uh to a troop you can use it on your opponent's Warlord as well. It's best used on a two-health troop. Um, best, I mean, there are times, because it's a random factor here, so it deals two damage, and if that target dies, repeat it on a random enemy. Now, I've seen it, unfortunately, against me, where it has worked on four of my troops consecutively before it hits my Warlord, which is devastating for a two-cost. That's random. I've also seen it where it goes, kills the target initially, and then just hits my warlord, and and that's it. And the rest of my guys are untouched. Um, it's best used, you know, to just kill that two health troop if there's nothing else on the table. It, that's an additional two damage to your opponent's warlord, um, or you know, and if you really get your fingers crossed, I wouldn't bank on it late game, but it could potentially clear a board if they've all got low health troop. But it's a good card for two energy. You are dealing two damage to two, at least two units. So that's good. That's a that's a that's a fair exchange. Now chem munition, um, I've seen in event decks. I don't see it played. It's a buff that gives a friendly troop, which can be any troop. Doesn't have to be Astartes. Doesn't have to be vehicle or, or infantry or you know any troop. Plus one, plus one on poisonous for two and it's a common and it, that's okay it, uh, it's useful in the event decks but beyond that that's not a great buff and as we've discussed poisonous doesn't do anything so you buff up your guy to a a three three or a four four and you kill a troop 
or you do damage to a troop that doesn't kill it and then the next turn they st can still use that troop and it's just it's not a good enough exchange if it was plus two plus two poisonous we could talk a little bit differently i don't think it would be too cost or if poisonous worked differently um i like the artwork but the card itself i, I don't include in decks now quartered bikes i think are a great start uh, they're, they're just a great start to a game with, with Death Guard. Uh, for two, they're a 3 2. Now, that's, that's that easy, lethal range. One attack is going to get rid of these guys regardless. But their backlash is where, where, where it's nice. Their backlashes deal two damage to a random enemy. And they're great for first turn in the game because if your opponent doesn't have a Warlord and you throw these guys out, they have to eat five damage. They either got to find a way to deal two damage without attacking with their warlord to get rid of this, and in which case they're still going to get two damage, and then they burned a card, or they have to attack it with their warlord to take the three to get rid of this, and then this will deal two more damage onto their warlord. So that's five damage onto the warlord for two. Now, if they're smart, and if you're smart, and you see this on the table, and you've got a card in hand that you want to play, you get rid of these guys first before you drop that. Because if you drop your troop, and then you kill these guys, they can deal the two damage to your troop, and then it's easier for them to get rid of um, on your opponent's turn. Especially if your opponent is Rask, then he just pays two energy and gets rid of whatever it was. So, you know, time and right in terms of dealing with these guys. But I, I like this card. Uh, it's a good two drop for the Death Guard. Shield up is a nice boost. Um, it fully heals a friendly troop and it gives it frontline. So in addition to healing its health, it gives it frontline. That's not bad for, for two. It's not great, but I mean, if, you, if you've got some of these troops that we're going to take a look at, um, are not too bad to have with frontline. Uh, they've got high health. Death Guard have very high health units and they have ways to increase that health. So even if they manage to get your health super low, you can just fully heal it and give it frontline. That's a great thing. And, you know, Rask and Garrow and Typhon and even to some degree Mortarian like to hide behind those front lines. Now, Sorak Bags is another, uh, another good fast start. Um, surprisingly, the Death Guard have a fast unit. That's not what they're notorious for. They're really not notorious for being fast or having bikes. But as time went on, in the course of uh, in the course of, of, of game lore, I think that's been kind of tweaked to some degree. Um, but that's a two drop, and it's two three, and it's fast. These guys are very good to have in a Rash deck because they're fast for two, and with his ability, you can get rid of a four health uh, unit. Um, and they are also. They're, they're, they're cheap. They can you know, they can ping. They're not going to be great, but they're 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 solid. Wall of bodies, you have to build around. It doesn't see a whole lot of play. I like the artwork for it, um, but it doesn't see as much play uh, at this point in time, just because it's a structure, so it can't attack. It has a zero attack, which is even worse. You know, there's ways to increase that by a smidge. Um, but its ability is great. It gets plus one, plus zero, plus one when a troop dies. So it gets bigger and bigger. The wall of bodies just gets higher and higher. It's a great frontline thing to hide behind and buy yourself some time. And man, I think I've had games uh, in events where I've had like a wall of bodies at like plus like like plus fifteen, like a, like a fifteen health wall of bodies. It's ridiculous. It gets stupid, but. It's not doing anything else from me other than just taking a taking a hit each turn if the opponent happens to have a troop on the table. Um, now, with a Garrow deck, that's not too bad because you might have low cost guys that you're going to feed to it. Um, but that's it. One hit from Rask, he takes no damage, and he can destroy your your zero your zero twenty wall of bodies. He just finds the weak spot to it and blows it to smithereens. So it's not as good at this point in time as it could be is it it has a small place um it's okay again in events you know, there's there's at least usually one deck for every death guard warlord has a wall of bodies in it it's not a bad thing to have but there are better things there are more offensive better things now captain U U U U Gioge, 
Yuji Oge? Captain Yuji Oge is one of the legendaries that I do happen to have. I did manage to see him um, in the in the store, and I picked him up because I knew that he's he's key, he's clutch, regardless of whatever Death Guard you're going with. His ability is just great. Now he used to be a five health. They dropped him to a four health, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. There's plenty of ways in Death Guard to protect him. Um, I don't think he needed the five health to begin with. So his ability here is heal two to your warlord when a troop dies. That includes your troops. Now it won't include you, you Geoj, if you get rid of him. Um, but his potential to heal your warlord uh, just depends on how many of your opponent's troops or your troops you are willing to kill and sacrifice. Um, in addition to how long you can keep him alive. Now when you have you Geoj in your hand... Don't play him on turn three. Don't play him on turn four with one troop that you attacked and killed. That's there's no benefit there. He's a sitting target. It's at that's that that optimal time. You want to play Eugeoj. Hold him as late as you can, and then play him when you are going to whether through the course of getting rid of your own guys, uh, or getting rid of your opponent's troops that you are going to kill three or four troops. Because that's six to eight health that you're just going to instantly recover, as well as potentially clear the board, and then have him on the table, and that's going to make your opponent sad. It's going to make him sad, especially if you have him sitting behind a frontline troop or one of the beefier uh, Death Guard frontline troops. Um, he just makes it makes the game very hard at that point. He becomes target number one, public enemy number one. He has to go before Jubak goes. Uh, but, you know, I don't care what anybody says. That's he, He's the one that's keeping your opponent in the game longer every round, basically. So um, if you see him in the store, don't pass him up. He is, I would say, for the Death Guard, he's the number one leg legendary to have gotta have him he's gonna go in every single one of your death guard decks there's no reason not to include him unless you're playing a death guard deck with zero troops and i don't know how that would go i don't think that's a good idea so include him now eisenstein is an interesting tactic it returns a friendly troop to your hand and it gives a plus two plus two there's no contingency um, the way the Emperor's Children had that perfection card to drop its cost, it just returns it to your hand and gives it plus two, plus two for three. And you can use it at the start of a late game to get a cheap cost guy, give it plus two, plus two, and bring it back out. You can drop Mel, uh, you can drop uh, Melgator for two. Drop Eisenstein, pick him up, and now he's a he's a he's a three five, and you can use him again. You could use anything with a rally, um, or you can save that unit that your opponent thought that they were just about to kill. It's it's a good tactic. Is it perfect for every deck? I don't know. I would I would say you'd have to really think about it. Think about how you're going to use it. It's not bad. Um, doesn't have use in every game. It, you can't use it if you don't have any troops or units on the table. Um, but it's it's good. It's a good solid rare for the cost and for what it does. I think that's a good ability. So, executors, uh, these guys here, which great art by the way. Um, these are the these are kind of the linchpin if you are attempting a poison deck with Mortarian. They're more key in their, like event decks because of their ability and their low cost for three. You're getting a two four, so that's good. And for two energy, they poison an enemy troop. So again, going back to Mortarian. You get these out and your opponent doesn't have any way to get rid of them on their on their next turn. Any troop that they play, you can pay two to poison it, pay two with Mortarian, stun it. So for four energy, you're you're you've just negated whatever that they threw out there and they have to get rid of these guys. Um, that's not bad. Their ability beyond that, their usefulness in the index beyond that is limited. There are better uh, death guard units for three cost or even for even for a two cost to some degree. Um, not bad, but at this at this stage in the game, with the way poison works, you you shouldn't see them in play uh, too often unless unless you're new to the game and you just don't have enough Death Guard cards. Geldirk Squad is a better choice if you have a choice between the two. These guys are better, same cost, same health, same attack, but their backlash 
is superior. So they're going to do something that doesn't cost you anything. Just for attacking and dying or being attacked and die. They're going to get plus zero, plus three to a random friendly troop. And you can time that and choose who they're giving it to if you only have one other troop on the table. Who's just suddenly going to gain plus three health. Now your opponent, if they see that coming, they're going to want to get rid of these guys before you have any other troops on the table to get rid of. But that's sometimes easier said than done. Just kind of depends on how the how the game works. That's a really good ability. And again, you're buffing the health of what you want. It's an easy way to buff the wall of bodies, not just by the plus three for Geldirk squad, but because Geldirk squad died, he adds it plus one. So now you've got a wall of bodies that's a plus zero, plus nine. Again, that's just wall of bodies. Um, but just an instance in terms of how to use it. So... Phosphix Bomb. For three energy, you can poison all damaged enemy troops. And you draw a card. And this is worthless. It's a cool little little art thing, but it's a worthless card. It's a rare, and it's worthless. Um, I think the only time, the only time that you might find use for this card, and this is really stretching it, is in a game where... Your opponent has got some structures that you've managed to damage and not get rid of. And then you hit poison on them. And because they're structures, they can't attack. So he won't be able to use them and they'll be poisoned. And I'm not even talking about Mortarian's effect here. The point is they're already damaged troops. It's not very common in the game at this point in time for a damaged enemy troop outside of Death Guard, maybe in Iron Hands, for a damaged enemy troop to survive more than two turns. My turn and your turn. If they're already damaged on my turn, odds are high that they will die on your turn or they will die on my next turn anyways. And again, going back to poison, it does nothing for me offensively. So I've poisoned you all and then you have your whole turn to do whatever the heck you want. I don't care if I get a draw card. That's worthless. So I no, no, don't do it. Don't don't do it. Vengeance is is just this is just a good card. It's it's worth having. It's worth having too. Um, I would say in ninety percent of your death guard decks, it gives your world lord plus three plus zero oh, and sneak attack on his next attack. Now, that next attack part, that was what was added with Garo, because initially it just gave him plus three, plus oh, and sneak attack, so it lasted the whole turn. Now this only lasts for one attack, which is more reasonable. Um, basically, what this is, is this is a three-cost, five-damage silver bullet, whether that's five damage to a troop that you need to get rid of, or five damage to your opponent's warlord to drop him down or to end the game, whatever the case may be. Um... You can throw two of these on in one turn if you really want to, and up them to plus six. So that's dealing eight, eight damage. Um, uh, you may want to stretch that out over a couple turns, but if it's going to win the game, it's going to win the game. So just a good card. It doesn't do anything for your Warlord. You can't use your ability. You're not taking damage, eh, but you're doing five. Great trade-off. Uh, again, it's a, it's, it's a silver bullet damage. It's their way to just get rid of that card I don't like it I need to kill it Zagard Squad is, a, is another good three drop card here that we're talking we're still just in the three drops here for the Death Guard this is really where they where they get their steam where they get their their board presence if they can get these three drops on the board and have them last a turn it's harder harder to do in this current state of the game but it's, it's still very good so these guys come out Rally, if they have no other troops, they gain plus one, plus one in front line. And 95% of the time, unless it's late game, when these guys hit the table, there are no other troops that you've got under your control. So you're getting a 4-4 four, four front line for three. Just like that. And now your opponent has to deal with these guys. And if they don't, on their turn, if they don't blow at least two cards to get rid of it, including potentially a face pounding from their warlord, you're going to build stuff behind them, and you're going to have the board presence, and now you're going to have some people behind them protecting these guys. Um, 
or these guys that these guys are protecting rather. And if you manage to get these guys out and then Geldrick squad out, and then for some reason your opponent still can't get a Zagart squad, maybe because you've healed them or you've stunned them or something like that, then you can turn this 4 4 into a 4 7. So, and that's just for a 3 drop. Now, Blessing of Nurgle, this is the, uh, this is the, the Death Guard version of giving marks of chaos to their, their, their troops. It gives your Astartes troops just your Astartes. It won't work on your vehicles. Keep that in mind. It gives them a mark of chaos and plus zero, plus one. It's actually one of the higher cost versions of this card. Um, the, uh, the Emperor's Children have the Hall of Rights and they have, they have the, uh, what is it, the, the crumbling castle or the crumbling palace or whatever it was for four and that required perfection to, to up their ability. This one just is just going to give them plus zero, plus one and a mark of chaos for four and it's going to give it to all your Astartes which sometimes is tricky, sometimes isn't. If you've got a bunch of Meldun squads out, that's not so not so bad. I mean, you could potentially gain three to four troops there with, with the Mark of Corn or Mark of Slanesh. Um, you don't want them to have the Mark of Zinch as a front line. That's the worst thing you can have is the Mark of Zinch. You're like, all right, I'm stopping everything, but now that you can't see me, you can just walk right past me. No, you don't want that one. Um, it, it, it's okay. I pass on that one over one that we'll take a look at here that doesn't affect all troops, but it's it's much better. So Command Bonker, as again, this is another card that comes in, and it was a rally, it gives plus one, plus one to adjacent troops. So you have to watch how you placed your troops, or you want to, let's say you've got one side with three troops on there, one of them is close to death, send him off on his suicide mission, kill him, deal the damage then drop command bunker between the other two and now you've buffed your two you've maximized the use of command bunker if those are two meldoons now they're also two fives to deal with um if they're something even beefier then they get even better and you've also got a front line to go with it it's not a use in every deck again this is one that's easily disposed by uh by direct rask but it is a good it is a good card. It has an instant effect, and even though it's a it's a front line and it's a structure, it is doing damage. Not a bad trade off. If you've got the room or you don't have enough card options, it's a four drop. It's a solid choice. Take a look at it, but don't just don't just throw it out there because you're at turn four, and you feel the need to throw something out there, and you want to throw a front line out there. In my experience, if I'm playing a Death Guard player and it's turn four turn five and they drop a command bunker all by itself and there's nothing that they've buffed up that's a very big implication that they um they're going to lose that game because they they don't have anything good in hand or they or they're desperate to try to stop what i've got in hand um a command bunker you need to play it with cards on the table to to maximize its benefit as well as as well as just make sure like if, if you're playing a card that gives other troops a, a, a boost and there's no other cards to boost, then what's the point? I mean, I don't care if it's a front line. That's, that's the whole point you have this in your deck. So don't just throw it out there, please. Look at your deck and make sure that you're going to have stuff out and play before Command Bunker. And even if you don't quite hold off on that turn, you'll, you'll, you'll get a better reward for it if you drop something else in place of Command Bunker. So Death Cloud is a four cost. This is the one we're talking about where this poisons all troops in play. And that includes your own troops. Now keep that in mind because you can do that two different ways. You could, hey, I've got nine troops on the table between my opponent and me, which doesn't ever happen. I have nine. You might be playing a bot if that's the case. I mean, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. But let's say you've got three troops. That's more realistic. Uh, and your opponent's got three, and that's maybe stretching it. Maybe it's a good close type game. This is gonna poison all of them, and potentially, depending on how those three get used on your opponent's turn, uh, drop your whispers by six. That's great. What's better use if you're not going that route, but you still want to poison things, is play Death Cloud first, and then play your troops after it so your opponent's stuff is poisoned and your stuff is healthy because 
why why get rid of your stuff if you don't have to? Now there are some instances where it doesn't matter. For instance, death death shroud. I care less if my death shroud is poisoned if he's the only thing I've got into play because he's gonna come right back. So that's kind of the exception to it, um, but uh, it's it's their it's their all it's their affect the table of uh, tactic. It's low cost. Honestly, I pass on it if I see if I see a deck even the even the Death Lord deck was it Death Lord or Toxic Toxic Cloud I think it was the Toxic Cloud Mortarian deck it's got Death Cloud in it I just pass if I see a deck with Death Cloud that's giving me cards to kill my own cards I pass on that um, maybe it's time when they when they revamp the poison mechanic and they take a look at it and this is better that'd be better that'd be great that'd really be great you could see Death Cloud all the time then. So defensive measure maneuver, um, I don't have it. It's not a required legendary. However, it's not a bad legendary. Some people overlook it. Drawing a card for each enemy unit for a four cost, that's kind of high. That's where for me it's like, eh, there's better choices to draw cards, especially with abandoned supplies out there, or even a Lacticio Devonatus. Um, however, you could be drawing four to five cards for, for, for a four cost. That's not terrible, especially late game. Maybe you need some options. Uh, there's nothing like stalling out. Um, if you've got a cheap, low-cost troop deck, if you've got a Garrow deck that you want to have lots of troops to drop, it's a good thing to have. Again, it's, it's a very niche. It doesn't work with everything, but it has a p purpose. So if you have it, Keep that in mind. If you have a bunch of low-cost cards and you're looking for just like spamming stuff out there, it's optional. And that includes your opponent's warlords. At the very least, you're paying four to drop one. That's a that's a bad exchange. Don't do that. Um, but it has its purposes. So you know, just if you're building a deck, if you're just looking for it, it's a legendary, and you see the gold board and you want to throw it in there. Don't. This isn't one of those. I think. Honestly, I think every legion has got a legendary that is a throwaway legendary that has like one one deck type purpose and doesn't need to be included while the rest of their legendaries are like 90% inclusion in every one of their decks. And this is the one that I would say is the least likely to be required in every one of the decks. Moturk Squad. That sounds like a uh, like an action show on TV. Moturk Squad this week. Uh, Moturk Squad, check out these guys killing things. For four, they've got two, and they've got a five. We're starting to see the high health creep up here in the Death Guard. I like them. They're not great. For a common, they're solid. They rally and they gain a mark of chaos. And as we've discussed. As I've just talked, basically, I guess there's no discussion. It's just me talking here. But Mark of Chaos can go many, many ways. And that 5 health, they're going to stick around, potentially, on a, for, for a turn. So they could become a 5-5 five, five for a 4 drop. That's pretty good. They could become a 2-5 sneak attack. That's not too shabby either. Um, I guess they could gain Unstoppable and Stealth. And that's not too bad either, given the fact that they've got 5 health. Having Stealth is okay. That, that's good because then your opponent can't kill them and then you can utilize them on the turn like even if they use a defensive satellites with max effect they can't kill them and you can still use them on your turn so that's not too shabby um, they're they're a good solid option uh, depending on your deck and your choices as time goes on you may pass on them you may choose not to um, but they're not bad these guys here are another great one really so for four, the Fortal Squad, same cost, same same attack, same health, get into that five health, and these guys are unstoppable. Which, again, we're start, we see some unusual things from the Death Guard. What the Death Guard looked like before they became their, their, their 40k versions. Uh, jetpacks on Death Guard? What? Well, here we go. These guys are unstoppable. They had some of those dudes back in the day. Not too many. Um, but five health, three attack for four costs. That's pretty solid. You know, if you have to choose between the two, I'd go with the three, five. Personally, that's just me. Um, just because I don't like the randomness. The potential for a five, five is great, but 
I'm at least gonna get a three. That's not too bad because even if even if even if that's all it is, if your opponent has to throw two cards at it, one of them being a three attack health troop to get rid of these guys, then they're they're it's an even blow. They're they're gonna kill whatever they get rid of. Now your four cost that you're most likely gonna go with if you have it, and if you don't have any other choices, is the plague marine. Now they're. Their stat, I think they used to be a 3-6 if I remember correctly, now they're a 2-6, so that is a little bit sadder. But they fully heal at the start of your turn with Relentless. So if you, with a 6 health, 6 health is beefy at for a 4 cost, really. Um, if they don't get killed, they go back up to 6 health and you get to use them for again, so... It, this is where, if you build your deck with Plague Marines and with the uh, Plague Elite and the Death Shroud, this is where the hard-to-kill concept comes into play for the Death Guard and the board presence really sticks up there. Two health is nothing fantabulous. It's not great. But as we've seen, and we will continue to see, there those cards that increase the attack uh, and damage and health of your of your of your troops, such as Command Bunker, um, such as the Mortark Squad. No, not Mortark Squad. Gildurk. Mortark is the uh, is those, those other guys. Gildurk Squad. If a Gildurk Squad happens to hit a Plague Marine and makes them a 2-9, you've got a Plague Marine pretty much the whole game, buddy. Unless your opponent just, like, throws a Destroy card out there, which at that point they might be smart to. Um... Captain Holgard. This is another one I picked up. Now he's got some use, not always use, but he's best used very similar to Command Bunker. Maximize his potential by throwing him between two units, and you're going to give him Frontline, and you're going to give him Poisonous. Now, that is at least a decent application of Poison. Why? He doesn't gain it, so he doesn't have Frontline. So when he comes back, he's still sitting back behind now two units with Frontline that your opponent has to attack either via damage effects which is possible and that would be sad but it, it, it they have to blow those cards to get to anybody or they've got to hit them with two of their units and those units because it has frontline are getting poisoned so they've done their thing and they've killed your frontline but they are dying and they haven't done anything to him they haven't done anything to your warlord and then you Eisenstein him, and now he's an 8-6, and he can come back and do his, his effect again. Now, that's just an example. I don't know if I necessarily do that. Um, but if that's a better application of Poisonous necessarily, and if even if, if you don't Eisenstein him, you've got a 6-4 troop on the board now. Great! Fantabulous! You know what's even better? Is if you Captain Holgerg, some Geldrick squads, give him front line, Make them poisonous, they're going to die anyways. And then when they do die, they pump him up by plus three. That'd be fantastic. So start to think. Start to see how it works. Look at those cards. Look at how they combo. Death Guard, again, um, require specific combinations to maximize their utility so long as you are building your deck in that way. If you're not building a frontline deck, don't, don't. Throw in cards that aren't going to uh, work for that. Now, this is one I do like. This is the one I like over the uh, Mark of Nurgle. This is the Favor of Nurgle. It's a costlier version. It's a 5 cost as opposed to a 4 cost, and it only affects one troop. However, look at that bonus. Plus 2, plus 4, and a Mark of Chaos. Wow. It's not uncommon to see a Plague Marine survive a turn. And then get a favorite of Nurkle thrown on them. And then all of a sudden, they are a 4-10 with a Mark of Chaos. And if that Mark of Chaos happens to be Corn, oh, it's a 7-10 that can heal at the start of every turn. Now, yes, there's ways to deal with that. You've got instant destroy cards at that point. Turn 5 of the game is when you can just destroy something, usually. Four or five, depending. You can uh, jubak them, bounce them back up, and negate all that wonderful benefits. Um, you could manage to stun him and then deal with him on some other subsequent turn. But the potential of that is so much more beefy and powerful um, than, than you want. 
to, to have to consider really at turn five of the game having a troop of that caliber on the table. That's just, oof. It makes for happy times. It would also make for sad times if you see it die, but it makes for happy times if you're playing it. First wave is a, is the five tactic. I think I think this should be at least a one of in every Death Guard deck. So for a five, you're getting three Meldon squads in play now. And when you think about it, this is not the greatest even exchange. Three Meldon squads is actually three points. That's three energy. This first wave should cost less. Now back in the day, Meldon squad was a one five, and I think. Even, even slightly, I think they might have been a 2-5, and I don't know if they always cost 1. I mean, that's way back in beta, and those memories are fuzzy for me. It's been, I mean, geez, we're going on almost a year here, I think. Um, I don't even know how much time it's been. Time has no meaning in the warp. It has no meaning in the warp here in my life. My life is the warp. This is where we are. This is where the demons play. But I think it's at least a one of because as a clutch, it's a common. It's going to give you three frontline troops. Now, uh, I'd say depending on the matchup and depending on point at the state of the game, um, it's not at all uncommon for all three of those frontline troops to be completely wiped out the following turn. However, it bought you a turn. That's that's what this is for. It's the first wave to buy you a turn. Um, if you can manage to combo first wave with something that ups their health or manages to uh, to give them like Blessing of Nurgle and that's late game. Again, that's late game. Um, yeah, at least you're going to maximize the benefit, but at the very least you put up a speed bump. In some decks, it might be better to have two of these and some just one, but I think one is always good. Now, Meldons in a, uh, in a Rask deck are really nice. For five, you're putting three troops on the table that your opponent is probably going to kill, but let's say he doesn't. Well, now you've got four, three little dudes that you can send out to deal one damage on your opponent's unit and then use Rask's ability. So you've got more access, you've got more versatility, not to mention they're a frontline troop. Um, so a good tactic at least one of, I would think, uh, in in most in most Death Guard decks. Uh, Gorslot Squad. These guys here, they look cool. They've got a six health. They've got a high cost effect. Um, I think they're not as great as they used to be. Um, deal eight damage to a vehicle. That's 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 going to destroy nine out of ten vehicles that exist in the game. That's pretty pretty dang impressive. Um, there's not, there's more than 10 vehicles that exist in the game, like 90%, I should have said 90%. But the point is, these guys are great, and they're 4 and they're 6. Now, even if you're not using their ability, you can still do 4. However, because of the current shift in the game, the current game state, I think that's A, it's overkill on damage for vehicle, because you don't see too many vehicles out there on the games anyways. And number 2, why would you want to pay 5 damage for, 5 energy for, to kill a, a 3 health troop that you could just throw him at the face of or a five health troop that you could still throw him and something else or, or just throw a Meldon and Durek Rask at and then get rid of um, it's a little bit overkill so keep that in mind if you've got him or if you do have him and you're going to use it don't don't just use that ability to use it use it when you need to use it I like these guys better these guys are the same cost however instead of a 4-6 they're a 5-5 five, five. and for 3 energy they destroy a damaged enemy troop. Now, keep keep that word. Destroy is way more important than deal damage, because it just destroys. It gets rid of any sort of like rage effect, like uh, Argus Brond or uh, Wraith. Um, it, it, they don't have to do anything. They're not. You don't even have to like follow. Have a second follow up attack with that for three damage. They destroy an enemy troop. Osgark Squad is like. Is like a, a, a miniature Durak Rask. Maybe, yeah, they're like they're like Rask's little buddies. Yeah, now I don't know if you would include two of them in a Rask deck. Um, I think that might be might be overkill, but it might also not be a bad deal. Plus, you got a five five on the board. You know, between these guys and Rask's ability for five energy, you can get rid of two troops. That's cool for five energy. 
two troops that have my choice. Okay, I'll take it. Purity of will. So these guys here heal and remove poison from your units. Um, and it's a 3-6, and it's a vehicle. Um, I don't know if there are two of in every Death Guard deck. I would consider them a one of. Maybe in like a Typhon deck, you might want two of them just because Typhon is just really just gonna gonna make make healing and just make it miserable for your opponent's deck but nothing like having these guys come out um after you've attacked with some troops and your your plague marines or after you've uh you've done a uh, a poison cloud which is, again we're going into a stretch here and then just drop these and then just heals two and gets rid of that poison effect on your side of the table and that's all your units not adjacent units it's just all your units including your warlord so a good, good, uh, good vehicle, good rare, not a bad cost. You're not gonna overkill it, but it's three and six, you're gonna use it the next turn. That's not bad. The reaping. Now, I like the concept of this. All enemy troops have minus two and lose front line this turn. Actually, I should reword that because what it does is it gives them minus two, minus oh, this turn. And they lose frontline. Now, losing frontline is actually permanent. That's a permanent effect on them. Um, I've used this card twice in the life of the game, and that was in an event uh, that was. It was like, I don't even know what the warlord, what the, what the theme of that one was. I think it might have been the Eisenstein event, and it was basically Martarian versus Martarian, and it was like an end game. Like they had like six Muldoons on the table, and uh, I just. Got rid of all those guys' front line and then just waded through them. And that was great. And it was like a you kept it in hand for that one matchup. You don't see enough troops with front line, like a wave of them to begin with. I mean, at the very least, you're probably gonna affect at the very most you might affect two two front line troops, unless you're playing like an Ornatov deck or something like that. Uh for a five cost. And it gives a minus two minus so that's great because you can attack them and not deal damage back, but that's just that turn. And it's yeah. if you if you can exchange this card for something better, do so. Defensive satellites is a is a better choice than the reaping, in my opinion. I don't care if they've got frontline, I'm dealing damage. And then I can get rid of them. That's great. I've the damage across the board. That's better. Endurance. Now this used to be five cost, and now it's six cost, and I think that's a good fix because that five, that turn five, is important for a lot of legions. Um, more so, some of the slower ones, including including the Death Guard. But turn six, deal three damage to all enemies, and heal three to all your units. That is it. That's a swing of, of six, dropping everybody by three and moving all your guys up by three. Works best. By you've got units to attack, you attack with them, everybody does their damage, and then just when your opponent thinks, well, I can get rid of them on my next turn, then you just drop this and kill everything else that has survived and heal all your stuff, and now you're untouched, and they've got a clear board, and they're upset about it. Um, I don't think there's any reason not to have two of these in your deck. This is cost one more than defensive satellite. However, the effect is a guaranteed three. It's not a random one through five. And in addition to that guaranteed three, it's a guaranteed three heal. Uh, it's a guaranteed swing of six. If you see this in the shop, pick it up. You need to have this in your death guard deck. There's no reason when you play this that you will ever regret playing it. Even if you're not putting out a troop that turn, dealing damage and healing is good and it's across the board so like it have endurance get endurance death guard we do endurance this week on mortark squad endurance these lock terminators these guys are cool now they just have recently been changed uh they used to be a six eight and now they're a five eight and that's okay that's okay um so they're very similar to the uh, to the squad here that we saw up top, the, the Zaggart squad. These guys are kind of like the big big brother Terminators. So it's turn six. If you have no other troops, these guys gain front line. So you've got a 5-8 front line. Mmm, beefy. Eight health. Ooh, 
Yeah, there's nothing like that. And then you got a five five attack on top of that. They're most likely anything that your opponent's throwing out at these guys is going to get killed. Now, typically, what happens is you throw these out and you feel safe, and then your opponent plays Jubok and bounces them back up to your heart, to your hand, and and you get sad about it. But you know that's that's the nature of the game. If your opponent has Jubok, they have access to that. It's, that's the way it's going to work. And if they don't. You've got a front line that's going to stick around for a while. And then let's just say you throw that uh, favorite of Nurgle on here, and now you've got a 712 with front line. Whew, yeah. Not shabby at all. A good card. Are they an include in every deck? I would probably caution you on including them in a Garrow deck, again, because of the way Garrow best operates. And you can have plenty of cheap front line. Um, but not a bad not a bad choice in most of your most of your death guard decks. These guys are great too actually when you think about it. Now, now this is I'm not usually a fan of like no text cards. And it's not like I'm raving about these guys, but for their stats and the turn that they come out on, that's really that's really the kicker. So turn 6 7 7. By themselves that's not too great like blank text you're like ah it's easily disposable a destroy card or two direct damage cards given the fact but he's not he's not a vehicle he's an astartes so maybe even it's going to take three direct damage cards to get rid of these guys you've got to stun them and then damage them up um, or throw front line on top of them but if you build your deck right and you play it right what you really do with the death card is you Force your opponent to throw a lot at your cheap three and four cost cards. And they're throwing all their little guys out because most people right now are running light and, and fast and flimsy. And they're getting rid of the, the three, the four, four front line. And they're getting rid of your plague marines maybe after a turn or two. And maybe they're eating it because of Captain Hogger. And they're getting rid of your Meldoon squads. And just when they think they've got some breathing room, you throw down a seven seven. And that's the start. Turn six is the start with the Death Guard where the momentum, the 7-7, seven, seven, the 5-8 front line, things start to really trudge. They've been doing this trudging for six turns and now they are there. They're at your face. They're coming out of the trenches. And they go, the Gertrufel Terminators. Gertrufel. They're not beautiful. They're Gertrufel. Terminators are up. And they're just seven damage is seven damage, man. Uh, turn six, I don't think there's too many cards in other legions that can come out at a seven seven. Um, I think the uh, I think the Iron Hands might have a couple things that give them a run for their money, but a seven seven, a turn six, that's pretty nice. And if you manage to get these guys with abandoned supplies and bring them out on turn four, I mean, yes, that's the destroy range. And your opponent will probably be wise to drop that because these guys out at turn four, they're gonna they're gonna wreck shop. So I'd like them. Are they an include in every deck? That's I would I would say no. Keep it in mind. See what you've got. But they're a good closer for a mid range cost. That's not too shabby. I like them. But you don't just throw them out there. You really want a time when you throw that. You really want your opponent to really just like grind down on your other guys before you kind of come out of the works with these now plague elite these are like the big brothers of the plague marines now they've got a three attack instead of a two and they've got an eight health instead of a six and then in addition to that they're poisonous and these might be in my opinion might be the best poisonous card that the death guard have access to and that's just that's really doesn't say much um but the fact that they can survive the fact that they don't have to pay anything to use it anything that tries to get rid of these guys because you want to get rid of stuff you don't want a 3-8 sitting on the game all game long they're gonna die whether they kill it or not whether they're killed or not they're gonna die um whatever they touch front line or not it's gonna kill them so they're good. They cost six, and if I had to choose between a three-eight poisonous fully heal, or a five-eight frontline, or a seven-seven, 
I don't think I'd choose to play an elite unless I was building a deck revolving around really abusing that, really throwing out the front line or the uh, the healing and the poison and the. I like it. I like the fact that we we see in the Death Guard we see kind of the evolution of the ranks, possibly more so than any other legions currently. You actually see the evolution. You see the big brothers of the the lower level guys. You see what they become. That's really neat. The Plague Elite, you know, are kind of the next step up is the Death Shroud. Not necessarily in terms of poisonous, but in terms of same effect. Um, you know, the the, the guys all being being the bigger guys here of, of the of the Zaggard squad. So that's neat. But you really have to choose how you're building the Death Guard and how you want to use them and what card is going to work best. Ignatius Groger has recently been changed here. He's a he's another uh, legendary card. So his stats have been dropped. He's now a 4-5. And there's some people who've got a contention right now with his ability. So he's got a rally ability and he's got a backlash ability. So his rally ability, he gets a little Meldon squad front line. And his backlash ability, he gets a Plague Marine in play. Before it used to be put three Plague Marines in your hand, which did nothing. Now, you're getting two troops in play when you play one, which is okay, that's good. And one of those being a front line. And then when he dies, you're putting in a four. So for a seven cost, you're getting him plus a one cost, plus a four cost. So you're getting 12 cost of cards for the cost of seven. That's like a five point reduction at different stages and at different intervals. But that's not too bad. And if your opponent kills Grolger on their turn, you have a Plague Marine that you can use on your turn. So that's the best use. And his stats is four or five, I mean, 7, 7, 3, 8, 7, 7, 5, 8, 4, 5 looks kind of low. That might change. We'll see. But um, it's an interesting ability, and it's not too bad, I don't think. I don't know if it's going to stay that way, but we'll see. So, you know, Cargill, um, here's a 7, 7 with an ability. So I guess if you have to choose between Geisel at 6 and a 7 drop with a 7, 7, here's an ability that destroys a random enemy vehicle. Again, not a lot of vehicles out there. There are some, but most of them are very cheap vehicles. Uh, but he's a seven. He's okay. I would pass on him. I, I think in, in the Death Guard decks I've got currently, I, I, that range from four to eight is really kind of skimpy because just the way the game plays currently. Um, a neat ability, not a great ability. Spectre of Death is the Death Guard's destroyer troop. So you've got poison. Every Legion except for Raven Guard has got a card that destroys a troop outright. This one's nice. It's one of the higher cost ones actually that's out there for seven, but you're getting two Nurglings for it. So I'm going to take a quick look at the Nurglings again for a reminder if you haven't checked out the Chaos video. Um, Nurgling is a 1 3, and he returns to your hand when you kill him. And he's got maintenance of one. Now that maintenance of one is kind of a pain. But for seven, you're destroying a troop. And usually you hold on to that, to like the troop that you must kill to get rid of that guy. And then you're getting two Nurglings on the table. That will always kind of be your options to throw out there. Nurglings comboing with Captain Ujoj, Ujoj, um over and over and over again, maybe feeding your 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 wall of, of uh, wall of bodies, um, something that just you can just keep repopulating with and healing or pumping up a front line or just doing one damage with Rask and then using his ability, that's pretty good. Uh, that's the Nurglings. Spectre of Death makes that possible and it has an instant effect destroying it. I don't know if it's a two of. In every Death Guard deck, it's at least a one of every every Legion needs to have um, a destroy card. It's a shame that Raven Guard don't, but they've got some other options. Um, but it's a good card if you can get one included. Even don't let the seven cost scare you. It's it's not going to be a bad thing. So Death Shroud, these guys are just ooh. 
you walk alongside Mortarian, they're, they're beefy. 888. Backlash. If you have no other troops in play, play another Death Shroud. It doesn't matter if they've been poisoned. It doesn't matter if your opponent plays a Destroy Outright card. It doesn't matter. If you play Death Shroud and you play your game smart and you leave Death Shroud as your own thing, and most of the time, at that point in this game, if you've got it locked, you shouldn't need any more other troops on the table to do the job. Um, you will always have a Death Shroud. If you are going to play troops after you've played Death Shroud, time it carefully and wisely. Because once you have another troop on the on the board, it doesn't matter if it's a structure, if it's a front line or anything, Death Shroud then becomes easily to remove. Because your opponent can play that outflank and he's gone. And it doesn't matter if you pumped him up and you figure you feel safe about it. If he hasn't killed your, your opponent and they can play out flank, then you've lost your death shroud. And that makes you sad. Is he a two of in every deck? I don't know. I like it for consistency, but I think a one of is sufficient because ultimately you only want one of them on the table. Um, it would be kind of neat to see them get rid of a death shroud and then drop another death shroud, but that's kind of redundant and then on top of that you may not be in a good state on the board to actually do that and benefit from it best but these guys are, are good they are good i won't say they're a staple but they're a solid closing card for death guard now holden tall is another one that we've actually seen some change to um his ability remains the same but he gained front line so his ability first off deals three damage to all enemies and he was an eight and he's a five nine and really the the thing there when you when you think about it is like, okay, I can do five or I can deal three for an energy cost. Why would I do that when I'm I'm not utilizing him? He's got a nine health, that's great. Well now they give him frontline. So even if you've used his ability, your opponent still has to deal with him. They can't just ignore him. They have to they have to throw bodies at him and he's a nine health, so they've got to throw a few bodies at him. He is a vehicle, so a Melt-A-Bomb or Rask or anything is just going to get rid of this guy. But, but he's got a nice ability. He's a high-cost card, um, but he is one, and there's several, as we've seen, Endurance, um, Endurance Defense Satellites, uh, even, even to some degree, the potential for uh, poison or light grenade or Kurtog bikers that can deal with a lot of the Raven Guard stuff that are low health that people seem to argue on and on and on about, about how abusive that they are, even though they're not terribly really. We'll get to the Raven Guard probably probably too late at that point. When I get to the Raven Guard, there'll be too many changes, and I'll be like, this is the shell of what used to be the Raven Guard. But where they're at right now, they're okay. But he's high cost, but his ability can deal with a lot of that stuff. But at that point in time, it's kind of late in the game. So is it worthwhile? Yeah, I don't know. But have him have him front line? Okay. All right. All right. I like it. I like that change. I think that's a good work. I don't know you're going to see him in every deck. But I think if you're a newer player and you have Holden Tall, that's a good closer. That's a good board lock. Mordaunt. Ooh. 9 for a 10-9 and it has shield and it's a vehicle I'll pass I'll pass just because that's too costly for nothing besides shield and you can stun it you can destroy it you can you know, destroy a vehicle with a melt bomb it just it's nice if you ever see it go through all the way but that doesn't happen in, in the current state of the game why play one card at nine when I can play three cards at turn nine and have more of an effect and have more potential to stay on the board? So maybe as the game shifts, you might see these guys, but you're not going to see it. If you have, if you're scratching the surface for cards and closing cards, you can throw them in there, but you're better off finding a seven or an eight drop to replace as your closer. Mortarian's Resolve is, is another good legendary card. It's not great. You have to know when to play it best. And sometimes you just play it as a last ditch. You're at turn 10 and you need to buy yourself a turn. And that's what it does. I mean, it stuns all enemies, including your opponent's warlord. 
and initially that might not seem like a whole lot, but if your opponent has got four units on the board, you stun all four of them, you've bought yourself a turn now. That's not the greatest position to be in um, because you've burned all your energy with Mortarian's Resolve, so it's not like you've dropped any, any cards onto the table. However, you're healing five and you're drawing three cards. And depending on what you draw, or depending on the state of the game, that five health might just be what you need to win it, to edge out. That with Typhon, you know, three or four turns of Typhon plus this right here, that's that's a lot of health that they've got to deal with. In addition to that, you've stunned them. So even on their turn, unless they drop any fast troops, they still can't do anything to you on their turn. So that switches the momentum back to you to drop your stuff, whether that's fast troops, front line, you know, beef ups, destroy cards, whatever you've got at that point in time, it gives you a chance to burst through and, and kind of kind of switch the momentum in the game. It's not gonna benefit you if you have too many enemies out there, unless you've got stuff on the board. If you've got stuff on the board, great. Um, but if you don't have stuff on the board, you may want to focus more on getting stuff on the board as opposed to playing this 10-drop. You've got to time it right as far as when to play it. The Imperial Reaper is... This one I actually like better than Morden. And it's it's stupid. It's a 10-cost it's a card, but it's 14 health. And it's front line. That's just stupid, you know? But it's, it's kind of... If your opponent can't destroy that or bounce that... They have to deal with that. They have to throw a lot at that. Whether that's whether that's you know their big eight eight guy and then some, or all of their little weenie guys. It's a front line. It, it it may not be protecting you too much at that point in the game, depending on where your health is at. But it's just stupid. I mean, look at those guys down there. They're just like, what are you doing? What do you, what do you think that bolter's gonna do? Stop stop you're about to get run over son so it's it's goofy it's stupid it's not like i think i'd actually play it but i like the card i like the card what can i say um all right well and that's it i mean we're through the death guard stuff here at this point in time so uh next up we're going to be taking a look at the iron hands the first uh legion that came out with the uh with the Istvan 5 set, so we're going to be delving in new legions and hopefully get through them before the drop site massacre star starts coming out, and that's December 2nd, uh, and it is it is only a couple weeks away. So anyways, that is the Death Guard. That's my thoughts. Um, again, I don't play these guys enough to really give you a lot of concept stuff other than just what I've seen and what I've, what I've executed in event decks, um, but... They have a place. They're very low tier in the game right now. Um, you see them occasionally pop up. I think Garrow has had some following in the, uh, or, or say following, but he's actually had some um, some upswing since his ability has shifted, but not enough. Rask is probably their top choice. If I had to rank the Death Guard Warlords in terms of where they're at, it's a, I, I, probably put Rask at number one, Garrow at number two, and that's a close two. You've got to build him right, but he's a close two. And then uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's really a, a hard argument to say who's three and who's four between Typhon and Martarian, and that's nothing against them. Um, they both have their places, but not the the gap between how useful they are compared to Rask and Garrow is is significant. Um and again Martarian, like I've said, I think I think he probably ranks at the bottom right now of the of the Primarchs. Um I hope they can change. I hope we see some changes and improvements with the poison mechanic. Um maybe I'll maybe I'll be required to, to do a little video on, on what poison means now, but for the time being this is just where they're at. They have a place it's not great. It's not at the top. They're not necessarily the bottom. They're just not played a whole lot. And if you are playing them, you really need to know how to use them best. And you can't just throw cards out. There's just too many better direct damage cards existing in the other legions that they're just going to outclass you. You've got to play your stuff 
right? You've got to build your deck right for Death Guard. You definitely can't just have Sludge in there. Like, out of all the legions, I would probably say Death Guard and Salamanders. Like, you've got to... It's got to be a fine work tool to, to really to really gel the way that you want it to. So, anyways, that's it. That's Death Guard. Thank you for listening to me talk about it. Next time, we're going to be talking about Iron Hands. Uh, all right, keep playing more legions. All right, talk to you later.